see you all. I look forward to the day whenever we actually can be in person again <laughs> for our meetings. Um, but I'm happy that there's this avenue that at least we can still touch base. Um, so I guess first thing on the agenda is approving the agenda for today. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that anyone has something to add or change on the agenda? All right, would anyone yeah. like to motion to approve the agenda then for today? I will. Colleen? I'll, okay. I'll second it. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. Yes. Yes. All righty. Um, any declarations of pecuniary interests? Nope. Um, and then the next is approval of minutes from our last meeting from April 9th. Um, that we had over Zoom. Um, did anyone see any errors or omissions for that? No, just, I was gonna, Tom, are we gonna not list the absent people? Um, no, I, it's not in my practice to do that. Like, okay. it, it's, we just, the rule is to show who was in attendance. Okay. So, but I, sometimes I do get people that I forget and don't take them off the list if they were absent. So definitely, if you ever see that, let me know for sure. Okay. Oh, everything's a go. Go. Okay. Um, would anyone like to move to approve the minutes then from the last meeting? I will. I will, it's Mary. Okay. Well, we'll put Sandy down as first and Mary as a seconder. Okay. And all in favor of that? Yes. Uh, Yes. All right. Um, next on the agenda, we don't have any delegations today, so then we can go right into business, which is the Accessibility Awareness uh, Week video project that we've been working on. So um, just to refresh again, the idea is, is to do um, having a short two to three minute video on um, each of the five accessibility standards. Um, so we have... Um, we sent out information to Quinty Access, Community Care, and um, Community Living for Brighton Campbellford for three of the days for three standards. And then the other two standards will be um, the municipality on um, the website design and communication, as well as, um, what was the fifth one? Oh, um, accessibility within the community. So public works and um, public spaces all together. So we've been working away on that. We've got, I think, pretty much four out of the five done. I haven't heard back yet from community care. So I'm going to, I got the information from Sandy. So I'm going to give them a call today to sort of say, okay, do you want to participate? Yeah. <laughs> Our original plan was to do a recording day last, um, yeah, last Friday um, to record um, the videos, but with the lockdown, um, we felt we couldn't quite invite people in to do any videos. So I think what we need to do today is make up a plan of, of how we want to record the audio for the videos. And then we're just going to have still pictures in uh, with the videos. So we have to make a plan for how we're going to do that. Are we going to do it with all the members or just one do all the recording? Um, and then what else? Is there anything else left with it to, to work on? Um, and then I will contact um, um, Ralph because I haven't, I wanted to dress me today to make a plan. And then I'll call Ralph later on today to sort of make, um, let him know the plan and go from there. Um, is there anything else, Tom, that I missed on sort of a summary of what's been going on? I think, I think that that covers it all really good. Um, I've been compiling like anything that you've sent me and then stuff that I've been putting together. I've just been like creating a folder for, for him. Um, mm -hmm. So he's basically um, waiting for, for the, the content. Um, and I have thought the same thing as you, just like once after we have this meeting today, we can kind of finalize what our next steps are and then just give everything to him and, and then we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. Um, would everyone like me to read a sample script so everyone knows what it'll sound like? Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. Sounds like a good idea. I pulled one up on the computer here just so you could hear it. 
Um, so this one, this one came from Clini Access. So I gave them, I sent them a script and then they filled in sections. So I'll just read it. I haven't even timed them to see how long they are. Um, but this is what we would say for the day for uh, accessible transportation. So it's welcome to National Accessibility Awareness Week. Today we are highlighting Quinty Access. At Quinty Access, our mission is to enhance the quality of life for people by providing safe and affordable accessible transportation so that they may participate and contribute in their communities by removing barriers and promoting inclusion. The Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act includes a standard for transportation. The transportation standard requires transportation service providers to make the features and equipment on routes and vehicles accessible to passengers with disabilities. The standard also requires transportation companies to inform the public about accessible equipment and features on their vehicles, routes, and services. This information must be provided in accessible formats upon request. Quinty Access fully supports and implements all of the requirements of the ALDA transportation standard and has been for 30 plus years on the specialized door-to-door -door service and since 2007 with the launch of the first conventional transit service for our area. At Quinty Access, we strive to achieve our vision by being a contributing part of the movement to create a future where everyone can travel through the same door. We support this by providing fully accessible transportation options with dignity and respect while educating the public on accessibility issues whenever possible. If anyone wishes to reach Quinny Access, they can look on the website at, and then there's, and then they would show a visual of the website or call 613-392-9640. Thank you for listening to today's video on the AODA transportation standards, which has been brought to you by the Municipality of Brighton Accessibility Advisory Committee and Quinny Access. We are thankful for the participation from Quinny Access and to Brighton Digital Archives for this assistance with this presentation. Very Doug. Sounds very complete, very mm -hmm. informative. So yeah, and I found all, all of them were informative. The, the one back from um, Community Living was really good too. And they've also, um, both Quinny Access and Community Living has given pictures back um, of people getting on the accessible vans, community living as people um, working, like Brighton residents who are doing um, jobs in the area um, that they have helped support because there is the, their employment standard. So um, so then there'll be pictures through all that while we're while someone is reading the script. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, Nicole, I think that that is really quite excellent and I, I I do believe the only thing that I would make clear is that some people wouldn't know what AODA stands for. Mm -hmm. If we if we just um, you know actually spell out what each word stands for, I can add that in there. Know. Yeah, because earlier we say uh, accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, but then I never say OADA, o AODA. So I can add that up there just for that clarification. And otherwise, uh, I think you do, you've done such a good job. And the reason that I would uh, recommend that you do all of them is because of the limitations that uh, the digital archives have at this moment being mm -hmm. so busy. Mm -hmm. And if you would be willing to do that, I think it would just uh, help greatly for Ralph to get this all done because they're so busy right now doing their calendars and other projects that they're on so mm -hmm. i don't know what the rest of the committee feels about this but i certainly would support if you would be willing to do that or if some other person on the committee wanted to take it on but definitely i think it, it just complicates matters at this moment when we're so rushed to get it done yeah. mm -hmm. and you, you speak very clearly i don't have a nice voice <laughs> you well, speak and, very clearly and you're pleasant so <laughs> If anyone else has a drive to do it, like part of me, it would be nice if different committee members are doing it, right? Just to have different voices. Um, but with the lockdown going on to the second now, um, I know Ralph thought it wouldn't be too hard once they have the audio, just to put audio and some visual stills together and then be done. Um, but um, it's getting that audio recorded, I think is the biggest thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Is there is there anybody on on the committee that's uh, you know just 
chomping at the bit to do it. Otherwise, if you would do it, Nicole, we, I certainly would appreciate it, and I'm sure the whole of the committee would. I sure would. I mean, if it's, if it's a case of, if it's a big, big job, it sounds to me like you're reading right off what they're writing in, are you? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, because your voice is very nice to listen to, and you mm -hmm. speak very clearly. Um, mm -hmm. So we're, we're short on time. I don't, I know I don't have a pleasant voice. I sound like um, Sergeant Major, so. <laughs> I don't think you do. <laughs> oh. I think it's also like a matter of, um, we obviously can't congregate inside anywhere. No. So, but even outside, we don't really want to attract attention by having like a group of people standing around. It, like that's against the guidelines right now, right? So I think if, if you're okay with that, uh, Nicole, I, I think that is the best uh, best solution for uh, for this case anyway, you know? Okay. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. And then I can contact Ralph and, and get it set up for that. Um, unless any of you guys want to do one, you can. <laughs> I support you doing it as well, Nicole, despite the fact that I think Councillor Tadman has a lovely voice and soothing oh, and all that give stuff. give it up, Bateman. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's that voice. Uh, <laughs> but I still support you doing it, Nicole. Okay, I'll I do too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay. Yeah. So then, um... and Nicole, the other problem that Ralph had had spoken about, and I think Tom can vouch for this. It's uh, uh, even one person. It, they have to have the the right settings so it doesn't pick up all the other noises around. Mm -hmm. And so that would just be logistically a real hard task to get everybody in it in a place where there isn't a lot of noise background. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that Ralph and you can figure out a place where where they'll have the least amount of background noise. Yeah. Or even if it's dropping off equipment here and then I record it and bring it back to them, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, uh, okay, no, I'll follow up with Ralph for that. Um, and, um, yeah, so Tom, I'll just need the, I think, do you have the other two for the municipality finished up yet? Yeah, I've got the um, the information and communication one done. I did a little more um, jazzing up on that one. And then um, I've got the good, I got a, a good outline for the public works one. What I'll do is I'll send that one to you. Okay. Um, and if you think there's something else you'd like, to add into there, um, then just go ahead, basically, right? But it'll it'll be sort of a good, you know, uh, presentation of it anyway. Yeah. Okay. And I've been going up, taking some pictures of sidewalks and and uh, things like that to go with it. But once I see the script, then I can see if there's something else that I could take a picture to add on. Okay. Um. Yeah, so then hopefully um, we can get it to Ralph soon. And um, if I'm hoping he sends us sample ones ahead of time when it's done, I'm assuming he will. So then I can share it with the committee just so you can all see it before it gets put out. But it'll be mostly like a slideshow with audio over top of it. Um, do, 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 do. Is there anything else for that, Tom, that you can think of? I think so. Like we're we're pretty close here and it's really just that final step of, of putting it together now. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Oh, I guess, so I was going to say maybe one thing, just in case we didn't hear back from, uh, was it community living that we haven't heard community from? Care. Community care. Community care. Maybe we should have a backup for that. Do you think, or do you think we'll, we'll get something from them? I can't I see them not wanting to participate. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a big job just to, okay, put your information in this spot. Mm -hmm. And they, they probably have it. I mean, I, just the trouble is I spoke, I've dealt with three people already and none of them are the ones that um, it's been handed over and handed over. So I don't know whether the, the 
um, inquisition part, the, the question and answer part got lost along the way because they should have this at their fingertips. You know, they don't have to make up something special for us. They probably already have something ready. Well, and I might even be able to glean most of it off of their website. Like yeah. that might be the backup in that I'll just write it based on what's on their website, get Trish to approve it as the executive director. Um, Cause I see her all the time at the office and uh, in the parking lot. And then um, we can um, just submit it that way with pictures that they have online. Yeah. Yeah. I believe we really need them. They're so informative and they, they deal with so many people. I just, mm -hmm. I don't know where the, communication there hasn't been great <laughs> it might just be because it's you know the individual brighton office but then there's a head office for all of northumberland so it might just be and the fact that everyone's working at home working at home that yeah they've had just one person in the office at a time and leanne i understand is the coordinator over there she'd be the one to talk to i don't know who you talk to well, but that's if who we're i waiting want for. That's who we're waiting for. Oh, yeah. okay. But she's in that office plus another office as okay. well. She's not just always at Brighton, but I understand during COVID, they've only had one person available at the office for phone calls. But oh, if yeah. you talk to her, she's usually the one that gets at least anything I've asked about. She's the one that gets things done. Okay. All right. Well, I'll follow up with um, her today. And uh, hopefully we can get that one going. Um, yeah, and I think you've got a good backup plan, Nicole. So one way or the other, they will be represented. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they won't mind if you step up to the plate and do the work for them. <laughs> Most people <laughs> like it when somebody does their work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it'd be nice for them to put their own stamp on it, though, too, and their own their own mission and values, right? Right. right. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's it for that. Um, Tom, did you say you've got um, like a Google Docs file going or? Um, yeah, it's kind of, what I've been doing is it's, it's just in OneDrive, like a, Oh, OneDrive. Okay. OneDrive. Um, yep. I just, uh, I, I'm not sure if I can share it ex externally, the full folder. So I, I might have to separate them out. But what I've just been doing is putting each, um, like, so there's like five folders in one mm -hmm. folder, you know, for each video. And then all the pictures and, and scripts in each of the folders. So hopefully I'll just be able to share zipped folders right directly yep. to um to ralph and you okay but i was um, gonna say if you want to trial it with me you could always try and share it with me okay. um and then i would be able to put in the pictures that i've taken into the one folder okay awesome okay otherwise yeah otherwise what i can always do is set up a google drive and then you can access the google drive and download them into your OneDrive. Okay. Yeah, that that may be end up just because I like the the permissions mm -hmm. for the municipal record keeping. Uh, sometimes I've been able to share, and sometimes I can't. And I, I'm not. I, we don't have like an IT person readily available to sort of like figure that out. Sometimes, so. Yeah, because I've only shared OneDrive to people within my organization. I've never done it outside of organizations. So yeah, yeah. and ours are pretty strict. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, well, we'll touch base on that maybe um, later today or, or Monday and get okay. that figured out. Yep. All right. Is there anything else on the Accessibility Week project that anyone has questions or thoughts on or things that we've been missed? I just, uh, just one thing, uh, Nicole, I want to say about all this. You've taken on the bulk of all the, the work here and Ralph, and uh, I just want to thank you very much. Uh, uh, certainly, would have been more, we would have been more help to you had it not been for COVID. So, uh, kudos to you for uh, seeing this through, and for Tom too. Thanks very much, Tom, for all that you've done. And 
just as a suggestion, maybe, um, which is always, it's always nice in a meeting when you get uh, a thank you note from, you know, another group that's helped us out. So if, if we could send a thank you note to the, to, uh, the digital archives and especially to Ralph for all that he's going to do to get this together. Yep. No, that's a great idea. And I maybe I'll send you a thank you note, and Tom, how's that? <laughs> or maybe the first time we get together again face to face, it'll be my treat day. How's that? All right, that sounds <laughs> I good. Like we'll that. To do that. Yeah, good. I like that. Just blame COVID. Blame COVID for everything. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of uh, treats, the tin roof at uh, Prince Edward is open at their back door for um, treats from about two in the afternoon till nine, I believe. So if anybody likes to have a milkshake like I do, <laughs> <laughs> or an ice cream cone. Summer's coming, Linda. <laughs> well, yeah. And they give a give you a card, a user card. If, you, if you've gone there five different times, then you have almost a free, free, so she well, gives sign us all up there, uh -huh. Linda. There you go. There you go. I just, I dropped that in. I Little PR. Little PR for the. Yeah. I know I, I for had. For one a, store that's open. <laughs> I had accessibility concerns initially last year, last year when they first opened, because there's a pretty mm. big step to get into the building. But I think now they've moved it to just at the door. So everyone. Yeah, orders it's, right at the door, so you don't have to go into the building. So it's great. Yeah, now. <laughs> I never had to go in because I was on my scooter, so I just pulled up, mm -hmm. and they they served me just like they served me when it was behind the antique store when it was yeah. tin roof there. So yeah, yeah I don't have a problem with that. Pardon? Where is it now? It's behind the uh, Quick Brown Fox. Oh. Oh, okay. You know, there's that aisle way between her yeah, store. Yeah, there's tables and chairs there. Yeah, and gotcha. there's tables and chairs there. Yeah. And um, there's a bell if she's not standing right there. You can yeah. ding the bell and she'll okay. come. Okay. I didn't, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonder, or you pull in the, the back parking lot. You can't, there's not really a lot of parking, but there's enough for a car to be kind of beside Horrible it. parking back there. Yeah, well, it's tenants parking there, you know, so there's no really free parking, but you can pull up enough and get a cone or something and dash away. Some people well, park down the stairs in front of the youth yeah, the uh, beacon. group. Beacon, yes. Yeah. There you go. Um, I just thought about something else. We had talked about coming to council and letting council know about Accessibility Week and the videos that we're doing. Um, I think that was on the original plan right at the beginning. I just thought about that. Right. Um, is that something we still want to do or just because everything's online with COVID, should we leave that? Or is that something you I and Mark can bring up in, at meeting? I think uh, we should go ahead, don't you, Mark? And uh asked to be on the agenda for the week of or the like the lot it what is it the 27th through to the 3rd of june um it's the i think it's the 31st okay 31st so the first to june 4th okay so the first monday whatever that is would be a council meeting and if if we could apply to be on the agenda for that. We could also uh, make arrangements to have the video if, because it'll be ready then to show to council staff and those who um, are watching online. I think at least um, that will that will um, bring people more aware of what accessibility committee does and also uh, give credit to the digital archives for their participation in it. If uh, if you'd be willing as the chair to um, uh, speak at that, you wouldn't have to. You could be as a delegation, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't have to. You know, you you just introduce the video pretty well. I like huh? that idea. 
I think it would have more impact than just Mary and I speaking to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, um, unfortunately, there's not a meeting. Uh, the Monday is the 31st and there's no meeting scheduled for that. The next one is the 7th. So, but there's a special council meeting on the 25th. I, it's, it's escaping me what that's about. I don't know if that's going to be like a closed session or not, but so the next, the, the most viable option I see right now is actually next week. I just don't, we, it wouldn't be able to get it on the agenda now, obviously, but there is accessibility advisory committee minutes on that agenda. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have the video to share though next week. No. So just like, to give a heads up though about it, maybe. Heads up that, yeah, Mark or Mary could do a heads up and then I don't mind coming on June 7th and saying, you know, showing one of the videos, awareness that this is what we did last week. And then I was assuming are the videos going to be posted online on our accessibility page. That'd be a good. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, I think there will be, we can put, we can put links to the to the YouTube videos for sure from there. Okay. Nicole. Yep. Once the videos is is going to be on the uh, municipal website I assume and the links would somebody be and it be up to the committee reach out to uh, the IFM group so in particular the oldie station because they have not only could they put it on air but they could put the video on their social media platform as well and then you can extend the audience that may see it good good point mark just get a hold of uh e e and if you don't i can uh, pass you along uh york bell smith's number he looks he works out of Coburg, but he looks after the my fms i think he's the station manager or you can get a hold of amanda right out of all these when she's there but i can pass okay. you along both your cell phone numbers uh, after the meeting okay um, okay, yeah, no, that's a good idea. I'll write that down and I'll see about getting in contact with them. Um, and here I thought we had it organized. Tom, who's in charge of actually putting each video up each day? Like where exactly are we going to put them all? Oops, sorry, um, on our um, Facebook, they're gonna be Okay. Each each day they'll, they'll, they'll go up on the Facebook, um, mm -hmm. and then there'll be like you know probably a news item on the Monday I would think on our website mm -hmm. about okay. it. Um, but they would actually be posted on our Facebook. Okay. We okay. seem to get the most views out of Facebook. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And then even committee members can share it off from there as well. And. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I'm trying to think about, because I know there's like a municipal, there's a Brighton Residence Facebook page. And part of me wonders whether we should share it there, but then sometimes that can go into a whole quagmire of- Negativity. Uh, negativity, yeah, that's the right word, negativity. So maybe we'll just leave it on the Brighton municipality page and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, if they share it, fine. If someone from there I'm shares sure it, there. Yeah. you know, but- yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, let me know if you want me to come to June seventh. I don't totally don't mind coming to um, council as a delegation on June seventh uh, from the committee just to um, highlight what we had done the week before, show an example video, and then um, yeah, go from there. Okay, yeah. so our committee has a Facebook page. Is that what you're saying? No, the municipality does. Okay, and which one is that? I think it's just municipality of Brighton, right? I think so. To be honest, I don't know what the like sort of URL would be, but it, it would be the municipality of Brighton would be our like title. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Anything else on that one, or do you think we've covered it all now? 
I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. Okay. If anyone thinks of anything else or any other ideas, just uh, uh, let me or Tom know. Um, mm -hmm. Next thing under the agenda is 7.1, which is municipal update. And so we'll pass that one on to Tom. Okay. So I've got um, three things to update you guys on. Um, just getting my notes here. Um, oh, so the first thing uh, we did advertise for the, um, the vacancy on the committee. Um, so far we have received one application um, I made a quick decision this morning to extend the deadline. Um, so it, but still, I think it's worth like, you know, putting the word out. Like if you guys know someone or have ever talked to someone who, who has been interested in it, now's the time, right? Um, just to make sure we get as many applications as possible and, um, and then we can get, get a new member. Um, so oh, that's those names. Sorry, Mark, we couldn't hear what you said. With the applications of anybody interested, uh, does that get directed to you, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. The action, the best place okay, to, you. the best place to do the application is right online, actually. Um, it's, uh, from the committee's page on at brighton.ca. Um, there's a, an, an online application process that's super easy and you just enter all the info and, and hit, hit submit. Um, and that's where we've gotten the one so far. Um, I can send that actual link to you guys um, if, you, if you'd like, and then you can just, sure. you can just email it to people. I would appreciate that, Tom, because I have one person that I know that would be very interested, but she probably didn't even notice the the uh, ad in the paper. Okay, um, you know what, I'm going to do that right now, just so I um, don't forget later. <laughs> just give me one second. Um, there we go. Okay, that is sent. So that's that. the link that you guys are all gonna get actually is a link right to the form where they can submit it. So you can just forward that to um, anyone who you think might might wanna apply. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Okay, so the next one is um, live captions at council meetings. And I know uh, Mark's gonna get a kick out of this one. <laughs> that he was the one, he's the one that pointed it out the other night how bad so basically i got a note from um uh the clerk candace uh, a few weeks ago just noting that she's been hearing a lot of people have been implementing some sort of live captioning in their um their online council meetings um there is a there's a actual built-in um, uh, function right in Zoom that does live transcript. Um, but the problem with it is, um, especially with Zoom, is everyone's audio is so all over the place, right? Like, you know, people are cutting in and out and it'll, be, it'll catch like bits of words. So sometimes it, it looks pretty good and then all of a sudden you'll get a bunch of totally wrong words sometimes verging on inappropriate you know it's not they, does that. <laughs> yeah they don't put like swear words or anything but just just like the way some words will form together it's like uh that doesn't sound right you know what i mean 
So thankfully, Mark pointed it out because I um, had tr been testing it at the last couple of council meetings. And I asked Candace, hey, did you notice that? Like, what did you think? Not super accurate, but like, it's, you know, probably still pretty good for accessibility. He hadn't noticed it and no one else said anything to me. So I was just basically waiting. I was honestly waiting to see if someone just said, hey, that's not not appropriate. And Mark was the one who did it um, the last meeting. So I cut it off and I've done some more research. So basically, I just want to update you guys on this um, get and get your thoughts on it. Um, obviously, live captioning is going to be helpful for, um, um, you know, people that, that have hearing issues or anything like that. Um, so it's an accessibility um, option that I think we should be providing. Um, but as far as what we're required to, um, it's only on request right now. If it's not a mandatory thing we have to do, but it is something that I think we want, we should get to the point where we have a system in place in case someone needs it or just that we can offer it at any time. Um, so there's a couple of things we can do. There's, there's uh, some services that we can acquire. Um, there's, there's sort of two ways to go about it. One is uh, you, you would basically like do the meeting, submit it to like a company. They actually physically go in and, and do the captioning for you, the transcript. Um, and then they send it back within 12 hours and then you basically put that up on your, your YouTube and then it's there with, with full captions for the future. And then the other option is actual live captioning. Um, and the, the issue there is, is similar to the one that's built into Zoom, but there are some better um, AI, like artificial intelligence uh, mechanisms that like proprietary uh, companies have. Um, it's not that expensive. Uh, the best one that I'm, that I've seen is, uh, it's basically 20 bucks a month. Um, and it's based on the host, right? So like, like I'm usually the host for all the, all the online meetings. So I would have a license for it and I would like implement it, um, at each meeting. They still only, uh, suggest 80% accuracy. Uh, for live captioning through Zoom. Um, that's just because of the nature of the technology. It's just where we're at right now. It's not always perfectly clear. If you don't even, if, you know, some people might, if you mumble a word, it's not going to get it right, you know? Um, so I just thought I would bring that up to you guys. If you would like, I think it might be appropriate to get a recommendation from you guys um, to like if you support this, uh, I think it'd be good to actually do a recommendation that says, uh, that directs or recommend to council to direct me to to do this. Um, but that's that's on your, your guys' end. So that's the information part for that. Um, and I can type up a recommendation if you guys wanna go that route. <laughs> what's your guys' thoughts? What's What's everyone's thoughts on that? I think if there's people out there that go to the committee, municipal committee to listen and can't hear, then uh, that would be great for them to at least read part of what's going on, you know, or I guess it would be um, whoever wrote the captions opinion on what's going on, but still, I think it might be a value for people who can't hear. That's all. I agree with Linda, if I can butt in here. Um, it's Mary. Um, mm. I, I think we strive to meet all um, accessibility needs, and uh, I think that's an area that uh, those and there's lots of people that have hearing impairment. So I, I, I think it's a good tool. It was um, not working the best, uh, what was happening on Zoom. And actually, sometimes I uh, was watching some of the stuff, and it was actually the way they interpreted it quite funny. But that's, that's not good. 
So uh, if if you have more confidence, Tom, in some other means of, of getting that out there, I think we should try it at least. And so I certainly would move that to, we make a, a recommendation to council that to, we appoint you as the host to have that capability. Um, yeah, I was going to say too, um, I don't know if you have any anything on this too, Mark, but um, the, it's it's also based on those two options. Like like right now, I'm not aware of anyone that's requested this service in the municipality. Like viewers on council meetings are typically, you know, when they're happening, it's like usually less than 10 people. Um, sometimes you get up to a hundred views in time. Like, you know, some people might go back to a certain meeting and, and say, oh, what did they decide on that? You know, so you might get a, get some more views later. Um, so that's a, that's a thought too, right? Like so the other part of these services, like I said, um, like, you know, I could send them the video immediately following a meeting or the next morning and they, they make a commitment to get it back to you in 12 hours. And that the accuracy on those transcripts is 99%. So that's something to consider too, right? It's like, do we want to do, we want to do live captioning with 80% uh, accuracy? Or do we want to submit it the following or after the fact, but these, these videos stay up permanently, right? So then you've got full accuracy, uh, well, 99% anyway, um, for all future. So that, that's, that's the part I kind of really wanted to get your guys thought on is, is, is um, which, which route you that you would suggest taking from an accessibility standpoint. Time-wise for you, Tom, time-wise is, is which is which is more time consuming for you? Um, I, I mean, I guess submitting it after the fact is a bit more time consuming, but it they have a mechanism. So like the one service I've really been looking at, they're called uh, Rev, I think. Um, they have one for live captioning in Zoom, which is just a license that you, you just, like when you start the meeting, you just like activate it uh, right in the meeting. So there's no real work involved in that for me other than clicking a button, which I have to do a bunch of that anyway. So, um, but the submitting it after the fact would just be a little bit of extra work, but they also have a mechanism to automatically submit it through YouTube. So it's like, you have like a sort of like a, a pathway to, to directly send send them the video that you want them to um, do the transcript for. So again, it's kind of just like a few few clicks of a button, pretty much. Oh, sound, it sounded horrendous to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not physically typing it up, trust me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess my thought goes to, yeah, it's that weighing that the accuracy versus the timeliness of it. Um, yeah. I know there's not that many people potentially listening on council. Um, so like accuracy wise, the 99% sounds a lot better, but in terms of accessibility, how accessible is a meeting if you can't attend live, if you can't yeah. hear it, right? Yeah. So, so my, I think my gut goes towards even trialing the 80% license Okay. for a little bit just to see how accurate it goes we know voice to text is not accurate um the amount of things that come up with kids when they're doing voice to text when i'm working with them sometimes you're like oh let's just erase that one um voice to text isn't the most accurate but it's real time and so it's that thing of do we want it in real time so if someone's actually watching um versus after the fact and i think i vote more for for real time um because then it's not someone coming afterwards and saying, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that meeting. Um, or 
having to always know I can't participate live in a meeting because it doesn't have live captions. Yeah. Um, there was another point, but I can't remember what it was. Um, oh, I know from my end, now on social media, like when I go on Instagram, a lot of people now put live captions on. They have live captions on for a lot of their stories that they put up. And I think, I think it helps processing because I find I actually, instead of listening to the person, I'm looking at the captions more than listening to the person. Um, so that's another vote, I think, for doing it in real time, because then at least someone can have the sound off and still be looking at the captions. Yeah. Are there any other yeah. thoughts? Mark? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I vote for real time as well, because the one thing we can do to increase the accuracy from the 80%, because especially with Zoom and Microsoft Teams is similar. It, it tries to, Zoom especially, tries to keep up immediately with the speech. And if you have a meeting, it depends on how many people are in the meeting. And if you have, everybody talks at a different pace and different volume. So every meeting, it's gonna take a conscientious, conscientious effort for people to change the speed of their speech because it zoom like when you're talking at the meeting and i noticed at our council meeting when people were speaking it'll pick up every um mm -hmm. a and then you'll see it actually backspacing trying to interpret because it's trying to do it as you speak so you, you could have counselor a talking you know really fast and the next person talking really slow it, it, you know yeah, once we test it and people can find out the pace that you can talk that the closed captioning can actually interpret it accurately because it's trying to do it as it's coming out of your mouth. And that's where the words are being mistyped or misrepresented. Yep. Um, do you want to, like, if we do this as a motion, then you guys can just vote on mm -hmm. that, that way too. So like the, the motion could be, um, oh no, so this is for live caption. I've, I've been typing it up as we've been talking here. So uh, that the committee recommend council direct staff to procure a live captioning service for streamed council and committee meetings. Is that? Um, yeah, I'd okay. make that motion. Okay. And then I'll, I'll second it. That. And is everybody in favor? Yes. 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 Okay. Nicole, can I add one more thing? Yes. yes. I was just going to say, like, it's it's key too in meetings. I've noticed that even when I'm doing others outside of council and committees, because I've got my own Zoom account, it's almost imperative. And I know mm -hmm. it's hard that people that aren't or don't have the floor, I should say, if the host or everybody got into the routine, because if well, somebody leaves their mic open, and you've probably noticed it, Tom, and even yourself, Mary, when you're, yeah. I've seen it in the council meetings, if somebody has their mic open and they're not the speaker, they can just move a coffee cup or something, and it picks up the loudest sound, and then the person that's speaking cuts out. So that's where you're getting some of the in and out cutting out. So say Mary, Councillor Tabman could be in the middle of talking, and another person that left their mic open makes a loud noise at home or wherever they're taking the call, and that's what the gets oh. picked up. So that's where the, the translation gets mixed up as well because they're picking up a speech, somebody bangs a coffee cup or whatever the case may be, and then it picks up that. Then it comes back to the... <laughs> yeah, stop doing that. So yeah, that um... That's something we can all control. You know, the host mutes and or the, everybody has to mute when they're not talking, and then it doesn't pick up that peripheral noise. That's going... Hello? Yeah. May I speak? Of no. course, Mary. Okay, thanks. Um, I just wanted to to say that um, bringing this forward for the council to make a decision is a good opportunity for both Mark and I to speak to the issues that, that are problems and just encourage the rest of council and staff to um, probably uh, speak more distinctly and and to be cognizant of the fact that if we're not speaking that we should be on mute because it 
all the other peripheral noises are coming in. And it's just a good reminder because I don't necessarily think that anybody on council is doing things to make noise uh, deliberately. So it's just it's a good reminder for staff and council that uh, we need to speak clearly and uh, because there is people who are hearing impaired and uh, to to go forward with this we definitely would like to have the best uh, interpretation that we can get so uh, that will free uh, both Mark and I to speak about that to the rest of council and staff yeah. and it's something that we can even put on our agenda for you know three to six months from now to to reevaluate to see right was it helpful yeah. or not and if it wasn't then we can look at the other option okay. yeah and Nicole I was thinking also you know when we say we haven't had anybody ask uh, you know for that maybe people don't even know that that's available mm -hmm. for one thing when they're hearing impaired maybe they would be very interested in this if if they knew it was available so sure. That's all part of what we do as accessibility. So we reach out to, to to all members of the municipality. And I know that you know far more who has disabilities with the younger generation, but I do know that one in particular, one child in particular is pretty well, completely deaf. And, and then that moves up to each generation of people. So... Um, who knows? Who knows who would really enjoy uh, being able to to read online what is being spoken? Yeah. Which brings okay. us to another thing. You know, maybe eventually we'll have to have sign language. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think... I think we've got the motion passed now, so I think we'll send that forward and maybe we'll put it down to reevaluate in three months um, yep. to sort of see if it was beneficial or not. Okay. Okay. All right. Sure. Um, I've got one more. And Tom, you had here. number three? Yeah. Uh, sorry, so let me get my uh, file here. Okay, so, oh, the last one is um, the community mailboxes. Uh, little sort of project we've got going on there. Um, I did finally get in touch with um, the, I guess the local rep who like organizes the install of community mailboxes in Brighton. He's been doing it for, I think the last like 10 years or something like that. So, um, so it was an interesting conversation. Um, basically they have uh, mandatory procedures to evaluate um, like wheelchair access and, and accessibility, like Canada Post themselves in their organization. Mm -hmm. um, so that was good to know. That's good, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then the other part of that he was saying is that it's it's all based on municipal municipal approval, right? So they bring, you know, they, you know new, new developments going in, Canada Post mm -hmm. is gonna install it. They give their, their recommendation based on accessibility and, um, uh, like pedestrian and transportation guidelines, obviously, like you can't just put it where someone's going to automatically cross the road in a, in a bad spot or something like that, for instance, right? Um, and they also try to encourage people not, they try to put them in places so that people don't pull their car right up to it because that's against the transportation uh, guidelines. Um so basically, in the end, uh, with our conversation was one thing he requested was um, an exact location of the one that was uh, brought to the committee's attention. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't, unfortunately, have the information when I spoke to him, but it's not a problem. I've got his pr direct line now, so we can we can just get right on that. So then and I can I can take a picture of it. I can okay. go down and take a picture of it and give you the exact address. Awesome. That'd be perfect. And then what he'll do is have a look. Um, if you can also provide like whatever um, sort of difficulties people were having with that location, then I'll just give him all of that info. He can go ahead, go and assess it based on, like I said, 
transportation and pedestrian guidelines that are that have to be uh, taken into account. Mm -hmm. um, and then he'll get back to us and with any potential options. But the biggest thing was, and I mentioned to him like, you know, unfortunately in the past, the accessibility advisory committee hasn't been consulted on these types of things, right? And that's, I think, part of the issue maybe, you know, it's like they've got their lens that they they put on it um, for accessibility from Canada Post, which I'm sure is is fairly sufficient. Like obviously they've, they've probably got a specialist who is look, you know, they've got uh, standards for that, right? But without our, you know, the approval on our, on the municipality side has never come with a recommendation from the accessibility advisory committee. So I think the biggest thing that I've drawn out of this whole uh, discussion was that we should develop a guideline for um, review of subdivisions that specifically includes community mailbox location. So this might be like a bigger project really, like, you know, start building a standard uh, process for when projects come to the committee for review. Um, but that definitely we should, we should make a, a specific note in that procedure for community mailboxes. Mm -hmm. Because right now we don't, we don't get subdivisions to look through, right? To approve. I'm yeah. not sure if the community mailboxes are in there from the very, very beginning or not. Um, I know I've been looking at them as I go along and every single other one of them has a curb cut out um, and you're able to access it. Um, okay. But, but yeah. Um, hmm. um, Sandy, you had your hand up. Yes, I, I just wondered if uh, are there any other uh, accessibility committees that have participated in this before, where they have a say? I mean, are are we starting from scratch, or has somebody already done this? Um, I don't know. In general, the ex accessibility advisory committees are supposed to be consulted on any new um like significant developments in in their municipality um it's just a matter of making that process a process right okay yeah you know, like right like it hasn't been in the past and i think like i said that's sort of part of the problem um but you know we've got a pretty good team going on now here and um i think we can start developing that so that was my my last point on this um, was that I think, again, I think it would be appropriate to do a motion today um, recommending council direct staff to develop a procedure for um, subdivision review. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I would support that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is it subdivision review in general or just specific to um, mailboxes? Well, I think, I think in general, right? And mm -hmm. um, I just think that this is a pretty key point that we can definitely have a, a, a say in. Um, like there's some things that the committee is not going to be able to have a say in just because mm -hmm. that's the way that works or whatever. But certain things like maybe bus stops maybe community mailboxes, um, access to parks, mm -hmm. if there's a park going in, right? Those kind of things, I think the AAC is like, that's where where you guys can shine, right? So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm just gonna type something up here. I don't know, I, I see Mark's uh, got his hand up there too. <laughs> I was just, I was gonna leave it to the end. I wanted to put, this is on the topic of what I was going to bring up. I had a resident bring up a concern on the weekend and it was regarding mailboxes. It's down in the area of the old store, the gates of the Presqu'il that's been shut down for a while. And the parking lot is roped off. I don't understand why that's roped off on what they went through last year, but where it's roped off now and what's been happening is the mailboxes that are at the end of the street that, correct me, Mary, I might be wrong, is it Lakeshore or Lakehurst? That's down there? Lake, 
the Lake Shore. Lake Shore. The water Lake Shore. Mailbox there. And because of the way they have the parking lot roped off, people are pulling up to the mailboxes and they're in the middle of the road. And if they're heading to their house, they're on the wrong side of the road. And it's construction down there as it is. So it might, be, and part of that parking lot is municipal. So from a safety aspect, it might be uh, beneficial to send somebody down there and look at that sooner than later, even if they move the barrier over, it'll still restrict, restrict people from parking where they're not supposed to in the person's parking lot but i don't think you can have people parking on the road to check their mail on a blind corner like that yeah that's what i was sort of getting at with what the gentleman was telling me from canada post he said they have to they have to balance those two elements right they have to kind of say okay how can we make this the most accessible but also safe for for everyone kind of thing right mm -hmm. so uh, and not encourage people to do something that's um, that goes against the you know highway traffic act, let's say, or whatever kind of thing. So, so Mark, with that location, would you think, in your opinion, is it due to the parking being blocked off, or is it due to the location of the box? He's muted. Yeah. Mark, are you there? Oh, sorry, there we go. Like the way they have it right now, if it was rope, wasn't was roped off, they could at least pull in off the road, mm -hmm. but because the ropes are almost right up flush in the mailbox, there is nowhere else to, they have to park on the road. So it's right now, it's more the placement of blocking off that parking lot. And I don't know if, if you remember when you're down there, that's a good chunk of that because there's a monument there as well. There's a doggy station and stuff and the garbage can, but maybe the whole thing can be placed somewhere else. But in the meantime, they have to adjust those ropes because you have no other option. You're parking on the road. I'm just, I'm just trying to think of then who to direct the question to for the, the Lakeshore Drive. Is that, is that to this gentleman or is that to who's ever owns the property that has it blocked off. Like, well, I think the rope property? is on municipal property, so I would probably suggest directing that to the director of public or, uh, planning, Paul Walsh and Alan McGee, and have them have a look at. Okay. I think are you able to do that, Tom? Are you able to pass on that concern to them? Yeah, sure. Do you want to send me an email about that, Mark? Yeah, I, I can take a drive down there after and take some shots on my uh, iPad so you can have a perspective of it as well. That would be great because then then I can picture a thousand, thousand words like me trying to secondhand pass this information to them. I don't think it's going to be yeah, super I'll take helpful. Some That'd be great. Because you have to factor in too, there's the, there's the everyday Monday to Friday traffic and there is increased traffic on weekends because the provincial park may not be open for camping, but it's still open. Mm -hmm. So you still get a lot of foot, foot traffic, car traffic, and there's construction going down there with the lakeside landing development. So you got a lot of heavy vehicles as well. So I don't think anybody needs to be parked on the side of the road with that kind of foot or vehicular traffic. <laughs> yeah, like long term. It's probably not the best spot for the community mailbox. It'd be nice if they could put it in the new subdivision somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That that community mailbox that also um, takes care of the people in the already built mm -hmm. those those cottages and homes have been there forever. So, um, I mean, to move it would be a real in inconvenience for the people that are already there. Unless it's a safer spot though, right? If there's, a, yeah, yeah. Okay. If there's a place in the new development would actually be closer to probably 90% of the homes along the water there. Because yeah. it's, it's out on the out on the street at the exit. So, but that they'll leave that to the experts when they look at when the development's done in the meantime. Well, especially since there's businesses right there too, right? So people are going into polywogs um, at the same time. It's all at the same spot. Okay, well, Tom, we'll leave that one with you um, to follow up. Mark can send an email to Tom, um, and uh, Tom will follow up with staff about that one. Um, and then to go back, um, I like the idea of putting in a motion about forwarding through that. 
Um, so I would, I don't mind putting my name down for that motion for the first or it, do you want to read it again? Do yeah. people want to hear it again? Um, so motion would read that the committee recommend council direct staff to establish an accessibility review procedure for subdivisions and new mun municipal developments. Mm -hmm. I'll second yeah. that. And is everyone in favor? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tom, for all the work you've done following up on the mailboxes piece. And uh, yeah. Yeah. My pleasure. I learned something. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I assumed that they had accessibility guidelines and putting them in. Uh, but it's that process. If there's issues with any of them there now, what what do we do with that? And um, just to like further on that point is I think that was his big um, sort of main point was it's easier to get it on that on the beginning, like, you know, to put our advice in at that point. Mm -hmm. um, it's not impossible to to move, but it's it's a considerable amount of additional work on on their end. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think he, he was definitely steering me in the direction of get your procedure together, you know, but it, you know, if, if, if the recommendation is that this has to be moved, like there's significant complaints about a certain one, mm -hmm. then, I mean, they'll have to take that yeah. into consideration, right? Yeah. And not necessarily moved, but even made accessible. So, you yeah. know, flattening the curve, having yeah. a paved area to get to the mailbox from the road. You've got your hand up there, Sandy? I do, I do. We have so many new subdivisions going in off Ontario Street right now. And um, I know the one down on the left-hand side and I don't know what street it's on, um, but it, it's like 20 or 20 houses, some like the real mixture. But they had, um, they had the boxes put in an area and we noticed as we're driving by that it's, it's not a great area to be in now that it's really built up i don't know where they're going to put it or they're going to leave it where it is but that may not you know our traffic on ontario street has increased tenfold mm -hmm. in the last couple of years and it's getting it's getting worse i'm gonna to have to put a fence up on my front yard a new side yard but it, it also is all the mailboxes that are going up are they just being put up where the builder wants them to be put up or are they put up where where it's accessible so yeah it's a good time to good time to be working on it and even having um, director of planning come to, to a meeting and then we can ask him those questions and he can hear the background as to where this is coming from, that, that might be a good option too. Who is that? I think it's Paul Walsh. Paul oh, Walsh. Director of planning. Yeah, and this process would, would absolutely include like, you know, any review would would be done in consultation with directly with Paul, right? Like he would he would need to be present. And we need to. Mm -hmm. It would it would be most beneficial if we could do things like that in person, obviously too, so that you could like pass the map around and be like, okay, what do you you know? Mm -hmm. um, but we'll we'll do what we have to do. <laughs> well, or yeah, it it goes back to you know directors don't come to our meetings. So, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll work on that too. <laughs> it's a continuous job. Um, all right, Tom, is there anything else on that one? No? Okay. Um, next thing under 8.1 is accessibility concerns from the public. And it says walking path between Royal Gala and Cortland Way. Uh, yeah, so I received... Um, uh, or we received an email from um, a concerned member of the public. Um, basically, the I'll just read the email. Yep. Um, so it's a stone gravel walking path between Royal Gala and Cortland Way needs to have a concrete walkway to allow for wheelchair use and to prevent elderly people from falling when the walkway is soft in the spring during usage. Mm -hmm. This is a safety issue, no matter how we look at this problem. Um, 
so uh, both Candace and I have been in, in contact with this person. So unfortunately, well, you know, so I guess the caveat number one is that currently is not municipal property, that pathway. Um, I don't think we've assumed it yet, but um, there's a, a new committee of council. Uh, I can't remember the exact name, but it's basically trails and, and, and walkways um, committee. And so the idea from the clerk's office is that maybe there's a, a possibility for the accessibility advisory committee to advise the trails committee on um, on like maybe materials or you know slopes and, and things of that nature if they get to that point with this particular trail and that also there may be some grant funding available uh, once that committee is up and running that they could apply for um, which would have which the accessibility advisory committee could also um, uh, provide advice on too. So um, like this is kind of more of an information piece right now, um, but something that we can just follow up on once that trails committee is, is, up, is up and running, um, then we can kind of maybe do a delegation from, from the accessibility advisory committee on that. Yeah, because that's almost, should there be someone on the committee on that committee? <laughs> or is it just municipal staff on that one? No, there's, um, I read the terms and conditions. I think there's, I think there might be members of public on there. I know there's, I'm pretty sure there's two, two counselors. Um, and there is a Who number. Who are they? Of I don't think they've been appointed yet, Mary. Um, oh. I think that's all coming to council pretty soon. It okay. looked like oh, anyway. Okay. If, um, excuse me, mm -hmm. if we haven't, assumed that walkway shouldn't it be the responsibility of the person who built it to have it accessible to the people who live there am i not thinking right like this is a new development right so when the developer made this development he was or he the company wasn't considering that people do walk along that area, wherever the area is. So maybe they just did it and weren't considering who was living in that area to, um, to use it if, it if it is somebody with a wheelchair or somebody with a walker or a cane, you know? Well, and just to clarify where it is, um, there is the Butler Creek Trail yes. that goes through the Stellward Park Division. And it's actually, it's the same material that's on the trail. So the okay. trail ends at Cortland Way, and then you go across the road, and then there's the little piece that goes to Royal Gala. So it's the okay. same gravel as in the whole Butler Creek. So I guess maybe the question is, yeah, is it the trail's responsibility for that one, or is it still stalwart homes? Yeah, that's I'm what sure I'm Tom thinking. If, that it's, thought. if it's a new development, I was down on that trail not too long ago, and with my scooter, I, it's manageable. Mm -hmm. But I can see that, um, uh, and I think it's the similar place. I'm not sure about the names of the roads, yep. but um, uh, along the one along the creek. It's quite manageable for me with my, then I get off it and I see a sign going in there, no motor vehicles. So I always have a problem with that sign because <laughs> I'm, I'm considered a, a pedestrian. Yep. So I don't and feel too guilty on being on that trail. Don't even feel though, guilty. You're good. <laughs> even though my, I'm, I'm, you know, the, the things, driven with Tom batteries. So, okay, I don't have to feel guilty, fine. I no. won't feel guilty then no. anymore. If anybody <laughs> yells at me, I'll tell them to go and see Nicole. <laughs> it's a personal mobility device, so, so you're yes. good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for I, doing that for me. But you, think, you see what I mean? I mean, how, how far do the people have to go, those houses, 
seemed quite uh, established there since the last time I was down in that area. So there must be uh, someone that the people there could talk to and we could, we, we could reinforce that issue for them or with them, you know. So yeah. hopefully know. we could help them. I know Tom, you had your hand up, so you might have a comment. Um, yeah, I did, like I reached out to the director of public works on this and he said that like, as far as the building code is concerned, um, it does meet the requirements. Like it's, it's the material is appropriate for the, the use that it, it was designated as. Um, so I think like this concern is more thinking bigger than the use it currently is designated as, right? Like it's kind of like thought of like opening it up to a, a more wholesome use in, in some way, um, which I think is, is a great idea. Um, it's gonna be a matter of funds and, um, and some championing on part of like AAC and, and probably that trails committee. Because mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't be something that would be required in an agreement, basically. I've got Royal Gala. Is that one of the streets? Yeah. And the other one is something way. What's the other? Cortland. Cortland way. Cortland way. Okay, thank you. I'm going to go and look. I walk there all the time with the dog, so I... Oh, yeah. I, I've got the picture oh. in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just nosy. It's just, it's not... Yeah, it's a pathway between the two roads between houses, but it's uh -huh. um, it's not sidewalk. So in the winter, it's not cleared, but people still walk over there. So then in the spring, it can be a little muddy and icy mm -hmm. when it's melting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, do -do -do -do. So I guess we can leave this one as it's something to whenever the trucks or parks and trail committee, um, maybe we can do a either joint meeting um, and we can bring it up or we can have a delegation there. Okay. Yeah. And I just checked the terms of reference. So it's two counselors, two members of the public and three staff. So there will be um, a posting ad for members to apply for that committee as well. So if anyone wants to apply to that one, you're welcome to. <laughs> Nicole. Yep. I was going to suggest, because we're already going to reach out to the director of planning on, I think it was the mailboxes. It may already be in the site plan up in that subdivision to do something with that. It, it, I don't think it would take Mr. Walsh very long to check just to make sure. And if it's not, then engage the trail committee. It, it might be something that's already in there that they don't get around to doing until the subdivision is ready for assumption. And I'm not saying it is, but it very well could be. I don't, I don't think uh, the director of a planning could probably find that pretty quick if that's in their plan for when that subdivision is ready to be assumed. Tom, did you already look into that? Yeah, like I said, um, I didn't talk to Paul on that one, uh, the director of planning, but I talked to uh, Preston from Public Works and Jim from uh, Parks and Rec. Um, and both of them were saying that it does meet, like, like I said, it's sort of as the, as the designated use that it's, that it's uh, required to be, it's, it has the, uh, it meets the building code basically with the material that's on it right now. So this would be an upgrade is pretty much what we're, what we're saying. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you for that information. And we'll, we'll keep that in mind whenever that, that mm -hmm. committee gets going. Um, anything else on that point? And on, on what number are we at? 8.1? Okay. Um, next was correspondence. I don't know if we have any correspondence, Tom. I didn't have any. Okay, um, so our next meeting date doo -doo -doo -doo, would be, um, so the second 
Friday of June is June 11th. Does that work for everybody? Yep. It's fine for me. Um, Sandy, you've got your hand up. Yes, I'm sorry. I guess I've been thinking about this through this meeting and I should have said something earlier. Who do we get in touch with her or do we have any say in the um, Moby mat down at the park because the last stretch of it is covered in four feet of sand? You'd have to contact the park about it, right? Because it's their job to, to do maintenance on it. It's the park's job? Yeah, it's park okay. property. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Is it, oh, is it installed? I thought they pulled them up in the winter they time. They put up last winter. I don't know if it was a trial or not. So they didn't pull it up. So right now with all the sand that's blown over, it blew over for the first three quarters of the path. And then the last section, you know, the la last section that was laid, it's totally covered in sand and it's about four, four or five feet deep. So mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to get it off there. Um, but anyway, it needs to be off because you can't get to the beach without going through sand dunes. Well, and technically the beach isn't open yet either, right? Like yes, that opens it, in June? No, it's open. The oh, paths, okay. paths are all open, the gates are open. Okay, so yeah, that's something to follow up with the park about. Um, do you feel comfortable doing that on your own or do you think I'll it's something that, that should happen? Yeah, no, I'll do it because it's bugging me. Okay, <laughs> and, and let us know, like bring it up next week. Yes. Or next week, next meeting. Next meeting. Um, and uh, if it's still an issue, then it's something that as a committee, we could contact the, the park officially. Yeah. To, I'm to just say. wondering just wondering if maybe they're thinking May 24th, but he's never worked on May 24th before. So it's there, it's not blowing away. And um, so any, I mean, it, it's hard to get over. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to get over because it's deeper than anything that I've ever seen there regardless of the Moby mat or not. So it, it's built, it's, it's just congealed right up in that one area. So, okay, I'll, I'll get a hold of Rob, hopefully. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so next meeting is June 11th at 10 a.m. Is there anything else or can we go ahead to adjournment? Where's Mary? She's usually yelling at us to adjourn. Hey, Mary. I just am enjoying this so much that I want to stay on all day. <laughs> <laughs> the only one thing, Nicole, if I may say, um, it's our uh, total responsibility to bring anything up that is of a health and safety issue and what to... Uh, Mark brought up, I think, has to be dealt with immediately. We do not want to um, place the municipality in a situation where there could be a huge lawsuit over uh, that whole area with the, with the mailbox the way it is in the parking, the, mm -hmm. the way people are using it. So uh, uh, if we can uh, at least put some pressure on... Uh, the planner and the bylaw officer to do something about that immediately. And I know, Tom, you'll you'll make sure that they get this notice about this. But um, we would all feel extremely guilty if 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 we were neglectful and not uh, getting this done as quickly as possible. Another weekend uh, and uh, with the nice weather, I think. Uh, well, um, this park superintendent said last year they were up a, a hundred percent in attendance, and now that more people know about Preskill, he figured it would be two hundred percent more people. So it, it's just a, it's an accident looking for a place to happen there, all the way around. There's just too much activity right there, okay, on a sharp corner. So uh, hopefully, uh, staff will get out that quickly. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mary. And I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second and it. I'll, oh, I was going to second it, Sandy. Good. I'm you got in there sorry, quicker Linda. than me. No, that's I'm okay. So that's sorry. Okay. I've seconded a couple of other things. All right. And you I'm, can move I'm, it. How is that? I'm good. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks all very much for coming on. It was nice to virtually see you all. And, uh, 
go through our meeting and um, yeah, look forward to seeing you again in a few weeks. Good. Okay, Thank see you, you then. Right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Keep healthy. Healthy. Get healthy.